does swimming make you gain weight? Absolutely not. Well, yes and no. It's a complicated question, but in today's video, I'm gonna explain why swimming burns so many calories, why swimming might actually make you gain weight, and I'm gonna explain a few different ways that you can burn more calories when you swim. And at the end of the video, I'm gonna share with you a workout and walk through all the different ways that you can burn more calories when you're swimming. Let's go ahead and get right into it. Let's talk about the facts. We know these are facts when it comes to burning calories when you swim. The water is 800 times more dense than air. So you're moving through this medium of water that is just so thick, it's dense. And moving through that is burning calories. Absolutely, just the simple physics of having to move your body through the air, but also moving through the water that is 800 times more dense. And that is one reason why swimming is great for burning a ton of calories. We also know that swimming is a total body workout. So because you're moving through this water and the medium is so thick, you have to engage all of your different muscle fibers. Regardless of what stroke you swim, whether it's the front crawl, backstroke, butterfly, breaststroke, you're doing side stroke, underwater swimming, whatever, you are engaging your entire body and that is burning calories, a ton of calories. Now, it's also a restricted breathing activity. So unlike when you go running or you're on the elliptical or you're doing something on land, you get to breathe whenever you want. It's actually a lot easier to regulate your breathing while you run. When you get into a stride or if you're lifting weights, think about it, you're on a bench press, you push out, as you breathe out and you breathe in as the weight comes back at you when you're doing that bench press and in swimming it's kind of like holding your breath now you don't hold your breath when you swim but because you have that restriction of oxygen when you can breathe and you're basically elevating your heart rate with that little bit of restriction that's another reason why you're burning more calories because the higher your heart rate goes the more calories on average you're going to tend to burn so those are just three different examples three different facts of why swimming burns so many calories now let's get into why swimming might actually make you gain weight despite all of the calorie burn you could still actually find yourself gaining weight now I think this is a very interesting topic even if you're not trying to uh, lose weight or if you're trying to gain weight you're trying to maintain regardless of what element you're coming from this is a very very interesting topic so the first point I want to make is that you get really hungry after you swim now if you're a swimmer you, you know exactly what I'm talking about you're probably you, you are a swimmer if you're watching this video but you get that that's post swim hunger and you just want to go and eat anything that you see I, I always joke the seafood diet right you you do a workout and you just want to eat anything that you see. You see food and you eat it. And the problem is that you think you're burning a lot more calories than you actually are for all the reasons that we just talked about. You're moving through the water, total body workout, you're, you're stimulating all these muscles and it's restricted oxygen intake. And so you think you're burning so many calories and so you get really hungry and you go eat all this food and you might be actually overeating relative to the amount of work that you actually put in. And so that's one reason you might actually gain weight and not just from swimming, from really any activity, but especially in swimming, you can get really hungry. And if you don't moderate that hunger, if you're not keeping yourself hydrated, because you might not actually be that hungry, what you really are is dehydrated and if you just drank some water you would actually not feel as hungry you wouldn't eat as much and you might actually gain weight from that from that as well so you get you think you're burning more calories than you actually are and that's why you're overeating so that's number one we need to clear that out of the way reason number two why swimming might actually make you gain weight is that swimming is not as weight bearing as a lot of other activities. This really ties into number one, but if you think about it from the perspective of someone swimming versus someone running, even though the water is 800 times more resistive than air, it's more dense than air, you are still in this, in this medium that's making you float. It's kind of like zero gravity. And that's the great thing about swimming is that if you have an injury uh, on your lower extremities or you can't run or you can't be on land, you can actually swim. And so it's amazing the, the meditative principles that are in the water that allow you to just float around. You can go into a different world and it's this absolutely amazing feeling. And for that same reason, you're not impacting your body as much as when you run or when you do something like in the weight room. You're putting a lot more stress 
on the muscles in a very short period of time. And that actually will burn more calories than if you swim. If you want to swim and burn more calories than say running, you have to do it at a very, very high intensity. We're going to talk about a few different ways that you can do that to really maximize your calorie burn potential towards the later half of this video. But just know that because you're in the water and because you are in this floating medium and your body's just floating through the water, that's actually limiting the amount of calories that you're burning. And so you actually feel like you're doing a lot of work, but you're not doing quite as much as you think. And so because swimming is not this weight bearing activity like it is running, you're not gonna burn as many calories. As a result, you might overeat and therefore you might gain weight from that. It's really calories in versus calories out. That's what it comes down to for weight loss. Another element is that the water is regulating your core body temperature. And so back to the running versus swimming example, if you go for a run, even if it's not really hot outside, you are going to sweat a lot. Now, when you're in the pool, you are sweating, but the body of water that you're in is probably between 79 and 82 degrees Fahrenheit, you know, maybe 24 degrees centigrade. And so because of that, your body is basically always regulated in temperature. And that's why it can feel if you swim in a really hot pool and it's really warm, you actually feel like you're working harder. Your heart rate elevates because it's trying to cool your body. And it can actually feel suffocating if you're in water that is too hot. It's actually very dangerous to swim in water that's too hot. And so the water in a pool always has to be at this regulated temperature, plus or minus a few degrees Fahrenheit or Celsius. And so because of that, you're not gonna burn as many calories despite the fact that you're sweating because your body's already being regulated in temperature in the water. And that's not the case when you're out of the water because it, let's say the temperature is really hot, it's 90 degrees Fahrenheit or 30 degrees Celsius and now your body is just really cooking. You're doing the work and your body has to regulate your temperature. You're gonna burn more calories and you're gonna feel hungry, but you might be more warranted to eat that food. So either way, you are burning more calories out of the water because of the impact, but also because of the temperature regulation. So that's an important consideration when it comes to calories in versus calories out. Now the fourth topic is probably the most obvious if you are a, an existing uh, athlete but you haven't been swimming and now you start swimming is that you're gonna increase your muscle mass in areas that you may not have had muscle before. And when we talk about swimming, we know that you're using your entire body, it's a total body workout, and so now you're starting to engage all these muscles that you never used when you went running. So now you're putting on upper body muscle. You have your back and your shoulders and your lats and even your core and your glutes. Now we're talking every single muscle group. But because of that, you're gonna to start to put on some new muscle that you didn't have before. Now if you have already been doing activity, and now you have another reason why you might be actually gaining weight, and that's the water retention. So immediately after you've picked up this workout routine, now your muscles that you do have are actually going to retain their weight. And I've experienced this myself. I've had some weight fluctuations where I've been injured and I can't work out. And so I'm basically bedridden and I start to lose weight. I've actually, I've lost about 15 pounds in a matter of just like two months from not working out. Now I got better, I started working out again, and I gained back that you know six or seven kilos in just a matter of weeks because of this muscle retention. The muscle didn't really go anywhere, but you have this muscle atrophy if you don't work out, and then when you start working out, you start to pack on that water retention, and you're building new muscle over time. So if you haven't done swimming, or if you haven't really worked out, and if you start working out all of a sudden, and you maintain everything else, there's a good chance you can actually gain weight by losing a little bit of fat, but the muscle weighs more than the fat, and therefore, you will actually have a net gain in weight. Back to the title of our video, does swimming make you gain weight? And the answer is yes and no, it really depends. Now let's go ahead and talk about a few different ways that you can actually burn more calories when you swim. But first, I wanna thank today's video sponsor. Timeline Nutrition. It's no secret that most swimmers get slower as they get older. It's tough to maintain muscle and keep up the training intensity. Timeline Nutrition has created an incredible supplement designed to combat muscular decline so you can swim faster and train hard at any age. Timeline's MitoPure technology harnesses the power of the pomegranate to help boost function and fight aging at the cellular level. When you eat superfoods like pomegranates, your body synthesizes a powerful metabolite called urolithin A. 
that helps repair mitochondria, the energy factories in our cells. But here's the catch. Only about 30% of people can metabolize urolithin A from food. MitoPure is the first 100% pure dose of urolithin A on the market that can help you bridge the gap and avoid muscular decline. Clinical research has shown that 500 milligrams of MitoPure per day for 16 weeks can improve leg muscle strength in 40 to 65 year olds. It also helps boost your energy and endurance too. I've been testing out the MitoPure powder for a few weeks now and it's incredible. I just mix it with water, food, make a smoothie, and I head into my training knowing that I'm doing everything I can to maintain my muscular health for years to come. I wanna train hard and swim faster in my 30s, 40s, and beyond. And Timeline is helping me do just that. They've also got a protein powder and soft gels that are packed with the same MitoPure technology. So there's something for everyone. Head over to the link in the description below to save 10% off your Timeline order. Use the code MySwimPro. Here's how you can burn more calories while you swim. The key is variation in these five areas. Frequency, distance, intensity, strokes, equipment. Now I'm gonna go through each of these, explain a little bit, then I'm gonna apply them to an actual workout and you're gonna see exactly what I mean. Let's talk about the first one, frequency. That means how many times per week or per month or per day that you're actually in the pool training. Now this can include your weightlifting routine as well, dry land, but what you wanna do is you actually want to increase your frequency and that's different than increasing your distance. So I'm not saying you have to swim more, it's better to do it in more frequency. So for example, let's say you swim three times per week and each time you swim 3,000 meters. That's a total of 9,000 meters per work. You can actually increase your metabolism and your overall swimming technique and ability and training and burn more calories if you have shorter workouts with higher frequency. So instead of swimming three 3,000 meter workouts, you can do five 2,000 meter workouts. The workouts are shorter, your overall volume for the week is about the same, just a little bit more. But because you get that frequency, you're actually retraining your body to perform like an athlete. And that way you're gonna burn more calories because you have more frequency, you're engaging your body more times per week. And that's what we mean by frequency. And I highly recommend higher frequency rather than higher volume. Now another way you can burn more calories is by increasing your volume. And this simply means swimming more. Now you can also change another variable called your density of swimming, which is how much you swim in a given period of time. So if you swim 4,000 meters in one hour versus 4,000 meters in 80 minutes. Obviously there's a higher density of swimming going on in the 60 minutes to squeeze 4,000 meters in, but if you swim more and you're able to maintain intensity, you will burn more calories. Another way that you can burn more calories is having variation in your intensity. This is probably the easiest way to get started and it really just means swimming faster or slower depending on the workout that you're doing. This is something that you can do immediately on day one, the next time you go swimming, thinking about how you are involving intensity into your actual training, how hard you're going, the heart rate variation that you're getting so that you don't plateau. You can also mix in different strokes. So a lot of people are comfortable doing freestyle and that's great if a majority of your workout is freestyle. I recommend swimming all the different strokes and doing things like kicking, individual medley, doing different drills to really engage different muscle groups and develop your feel of the water that allow you to train faster, train harder, and you can burn more calories at the same time. Finally, there is equipment. So when you train with different equipment, you really maximize your resistance in the water, and this is the fastest way to get your heart rate up and burn even more calories. Now, I wanna show you guys all of these different variables in practice with a structured workout. So the workout I'm gonna show you is something that I wrote custom. It's in the MySwim Pro app. It's called Calorie Torture, and we're gonna really burn some calories here. Now, no, it's only 2,500 meters that might be a lot or a little and you can modify this workout pretty easily I'm going to show you how you can do that what I want you to really pay attention to when I go over this is what I say about each set and how you can burn more calories and how it all fits together so this workout again is in the my swim pro app now the intervals are customized for me so if you see intervals on the screen that are too fast or slow just know that our algorithm actually personalizes these based on how fast you swim and these are based on how fast I swim so keep that in mind first set is a three 100 freestyle warm up. We have that on the four minute here. Then we're gonna do 450s kick with fins. See, we're adding equipment, we're adding variation. We're gonna do some kick, we're gonna work on our lower body. And if you really wanna work on the capacity part of your breath control, you can kick halfway underwater, 15 meters underwater. The next set is 650s transition 
IM. If you're not familiar with IM, it's short for individual medley. And transition IM is where you go butterfly backstroke. We're assuming this is a 25 meter pool. So the first 50 is butterfly backstroke. The second 50 is backstroke breaststroke. And then the third 50 is breaststroke freestyle. We're gonna go two rounds of that. It's a great way to add that variation of stroke. And you get to work on the transition turns. And that's why they're called transition IM. Next, we're gonna head into the preset. We've got a beautiful preset here with 425's drill. The drill we're gonna do is three strokes plus 12 kicks, really working on rotation. And we're gonna use some equipment. I love equipment. We're gonna go fins, paddles, and snorkel. So the snorkel is great for stabilizing the head. Keep your eyes down. We're gonna get that the breath constriction. And we're adding fins and paddles for additional feel of the water and resistance. We're gonna go 425's drill, then a 200 freestyle with the snorkel. We're doing this two rounds through on this set. We're really trying to get the heart really pumping, get the lungs expanded for the main set. Now the main set is one round. We're gonna go four 100s freestyle, descend, and on this set you can see the target times are, again, based on your speed. So these are descending, see 105, 101, 57, 53. Those are the target times that we're trying to hit. Then we're gonna go into 850s pull, we're adding paddles and a buoy, and these are at race pace. Now this is, this is gonna hurt because these are race pace, the intensity is the highest, we have target times. If you can descend as well, that is great. We saw the hundreds were descend, the 50s descend as well. Then we go into the final set of 650s freestyle. This is your cool down, this is ascend. So we're going from fast, too slow and you can see the variation in target time from 26 up to 33 going an easy pace at the end now if you notice there's a lot of different variation in speed in distance in stroke variety and in equipment and frequency would be you do this workout four times per week rather than three times per week if you want to modify the workout you can simply make the main set a little bit longer you can go multiple rounds of the main set or you can extend any part of it and you can easily get this workout up to 3500 4500 or you can shrink it down to 1500 as well Make sure you head over to the link down below in the description where you can get your personalized swim training plan. Train with me in the My Swim Pro app. While you're down there, go ahead and check out my book, Swim Like a Pro. And while you're down there, also leave a comment with your questions. I love reading your questions. I'm actually doing video responses to the top questions on the other channel, My Swim Pro Community. Go ahead and head over there and you can see some video responses to questions that you guys are asking. Hope this helps you. Happy swimming and have a great day. Bye.